Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 272 is with Craig Ferguson from the Joy Podcast. I'm good, Arrow. How are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. I want to start off by asking the question, did you take psychology while you were in school? Because the way that you get into your conversations, it's like you, 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 you put focus on those that you're with while keeping an eye on those who are receiving the message that you've, you've, you've got such a smoothness about you. Yeah, thank you. I did not take psychology at school. In fact, I barely took school. <laughs> I, uh, I dropped out of high school when I was 16, but I, I, uh, I think that what happened was that I, I came of age in a particularly, you know, kind of hostile and, and fairly dangerous environment. So I, I feel like those skills you described were were essential uh, for for coping and, and navigating the the area in which I grew up. So I think I think that, I think that's what it was really. I think it, it was. You know, it's nice of you to say it, and I think that's really what it is. So when did you discover gratitude was a powerful tool for for your mind, body, and soul? Because so many people travel through life searching for their purpose, and they can't even focus on gratitude. Well, I think, uh, you know, it was it was an essential component for me of getting sober when I was 29. I mean, I, I had some hard years drinking in my 20s, and I, I you know, luckily I got struck sober when I was 29. And I think that... You know, gratitude, it sounds, it, it can sound like a little Pollyanna-ish, but mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think it's a silver bullet in, in life. I mean, you know, it, being being grateful or having a, a you know, or looking at, you know, the, the difficulties that other people are facing, they don't take your problems away, but they give you a sense of perspective on it. Uh, <clears throat> and I think that if gratitude has, has a magical power, it, it kind of gives you a sense of perspective on where you really are rather than you know for me and i think for a lot of people the you know the real the real demon that haunts uh, a lot of us is self-pity then gratitude just mm-hmm. makes that evaporate one of the things that i learned in listening to your podcast joy is the fact that you're you're a student i love the way that when you were talking with gabriel a, a, about being in that arena i could hear that student asking those questions about were you nervous how what do you do to prepare to go out there on that show you, you were a student yeah, well, I'm, I'm interested. I, I guess because I officially stopped being a student when I was 16, I feel like I have to catch up <laughs> even now, you know, now that I'm 61. Now, making that transition to a podcast, that's got to be incredible for you in the way that you truly get to hear the, the, the voices and, and the passion that, of, of the guests that, that you, know, you invite into the studio. It's not like a, a five-minute interview. You really dig in, Craig. Well, it's. I think that one of the the luxuries of these long form interviews, you get to do that. I mean, the, it, it's very difficult if we're, you know, like in the in the format that we're doing right now, we, or that I did for so long on television. If you have ten minutes, you know, fifteen minutes to talk to someone, it's very difficult to to kind of find all the different nuances and and to and to kind of investigate uh, someone's attitudes. But as, as if a conversation is long enough to ramble, then you start to you start to kind of learn things. I think so. Yeah, it is very lucky. I think it's very useful. So, what was it like for you to put your first novel together? Because I'm a writer, and that's two different kinds of disciplines. You know, being somebody that's on the radio versus somebody who's putting words on a page. Yeah, I think writing a novel is a is a whole different thing. The the really reason I wrote a novel is because I wanted to tell a story in you know in which really in the construction of that story i didn't have to talk to anyone else and what i mean by that is that previously to writing the novel i had made a film as a and, a and i didn't like the film and i had written the film and i directed the film and i and i was in the film and i didn't really like it and i thought well what what, what happened so i thought i'll try to tell a story again a different story uh where i don't have to talk to anyone no no executives no you know and what what happened with the the novel i don't know about your experience right now but i i didn't have a, a whole novel in my head mm-hmm. i just started writing the story and it and it seemed to tell itself to me right and i kind of love that it's a lovely experience yeah i, I love the idea that how it, i've always said that i'm just the receiver it's coming from the universe and and somehow some way i've got i've got to bring it out and you're right there's struggles in it and and people don't realize how how much energy is actually put into that book 
Yeah, you you do. I think when writing something like that, you you it's really the graft is what's important. You have to go to the the whatever form of write your pen or your computer, or whatever it is, and you just have to sit there for. For me, it was like four hours a day. You just sit there, and <laughs> you know. And if, if if something happens, then it happens. And sometimes you get a lot of stuff, and sometimes you sit there for four hours like a putz. But you know, it happens. <laughs> Did you have to go through a fermenting stage where, in other words, when, when you do wait for it to get there, I mean, it's like, because I'll, I'll put a book aside and come back a week later, and all of a sudden it's a different personality, and it's like, okay, we're going to reconstruct these characters. Yeah, absolutely. I have a, I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, oh, the uh, he's, he's gone now, but it was an old British comedian called Peter Cook who was a mentor to me. Mm. And I loved Peter. And, and Cookie used to say, when people said they were writing a book, he would always say, Neither am I, <laughs> and I think that uh, I, I get it. It goes because I, I've been writing a novel. I'm about 120 pages into a novel I've been writing for about I think maybe five years. Yeah. Um, and I I just it, I think about it a lot, a lot, a lot, and um, you know, and it's still kind of not happening yet. But it'll either happen or it won't. I feel like I'm not in charge. Yeah. You know, when you talk about that kind of. The, the idea of the uh, collective unconscious maybe or the whatever it is the universe giving you the story I just I, you just have to wait well see I've always read that that medicine men of Native American uh, nations would would look for people like ourselves the creative ones because they need people to to be the future of the medicine and so when I listen to you and I read your stuff it's like this guy in his own way is a medicine man well uh, that's a, a great compliment and uh, and I'll take it um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an opinion on it other than that, that sounds nice, and I like the I like the description. I'd like to have that. Well, it's almost like you know, when, like when you sit down with Kathy Lee Gifford, or even with your with Tony Hawk, you bring out their human side, and th- because all we have on this side is either a website or we have a magazine that's telling us a story. You really get in there and allow them to become a part of our lives. Well, I think that the whole idea of a conversation with any individual, if you're lucky enough to have it, whether it's you know someone in the media or a sports person or a or an artist or someone who just uh, lives on earth, that if the conversation is long enough and and you all you have to do is like you say is is listen, then people uh, unfold mm-hmm. uh, and they will tell you who they are, and they're all different. Everyone's different, and. Uh, what it's why I tend to steer away from conversations with politicians or people who are very highly trained in media um, performance because they they have this idea that I think we must learn it at some school and the phrase is they stay on message but the problem is if you stay on message that's the only thing you're going to say and and to me that it's boring yep yep the the photograph that's attached to the podcast are you going to market that are you going to take that to your concerts when you're out there on that live stage because i'll bet you there's a lot of people that would put that in a beautiful frame <laughs> i never thought about it but yeah i mean you know, you, i guess if you you talk to the people at iheart who make the podcast if they think there's a way of making money out of it, i'm guessing it'll be out there so yeah i don't know i my guess is the industry being the way it is i probably don't own that photograph so <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> do you ever interview yourself? I, I call it defragging, where you ask the question and then question the answers. I I do that. I don't uh, I don't know if I would call it interviewing myself, but I do I do question myself. I do I do say, really, is this is this what we want to is this what we want to do here? Um, I think that that's uh, I think that's not a terrible. Thing to do I think it's okay to, to question yourself a little bit I think that what's good to do though is to take counsel from uh, trusted friends rather than the people in your head oh yeah uh, that's where I've come down to it yeah absolutely well congratulations on the podcast I hope that your tour uh, comes through Charlotte sometime because we need to get together and have some southern food that sounds like a great idea <laughs> I, I was, I've been in Charlotte fairly recently but you know, I guess you were busy. I, um, <laughs> we'll do it next time. Excellent. Will you be brilliant today? Okay, sir. You too. Thanks okay. for the thanks for the conversation. I wish it was a little longer. Absolutely, I'm with you on that.